Hey everybody, good to see you back once again. A little bit of progress has been made since the last time you were here. I spent part of this morning building up these worn portions of the existing forks and dogs. You can see this one was the one that went right there on the number four rail and it was really worn down. So added some metal and filed it back down just kind of like a zap zap file file zap file until they were all reshaped and looking more like the top of our new fork. So picking up where we left off, we have two rails to make. We have the two three rail, horribly bent and damaged, and we have the number four gear rail, just a little bit bent. These are five eighths in diameter, and I've got some tight tolerance five eighths drill rod will be a perfect stand in for both of these. So the two three is awfully busy, and the fourth gear rail, if I can pick it up there we are, is a lot more straightforward. So we're going to start with this one because there's just less overall to deal with. Once we get our rhythm down with this one, then we'll move on to the other ones. So over to the little mini lathe. All right, I've got the drill rod centered in the chuck. All I've done so far is dress the end of it to square it off and I replicated the slight bevel that was on the original rail. We've got, stay there now, round things, you know. We've got a template made that matches the profile of the grooves we need to cut. And okay, what you're about to see here is in no way professionalism. This is just a guy that's messed with lathes long enough to make round things a slightly different flavor of round. So if you're a professional, it's probably best to click away right now. I know how I want to do it though. So first thing we have to do is locate and start cutting this first groove. And a ruler is all you need here. This is not a uh, tolerance critical application, at least not until we get down to like um, curvature and uh, root diameter down there. But I can see if we start from the very end and measure in, the leading edge of this groove is one quarter of an inch in from the end of the rod. All right, we've established our first, I dropped the pencil. Like I said, not professionalism. We've established our first mark with the ruler, so I just need to get that in place all the way around. That's the easiest way to do that. Now we make it permanent. I'll do all the same steps for the other end of the groove. Just verify. Yep, looking good. So now we have the area marked where we have to remove material. To all of you that are like, there's a better way to do that. My preemptive response to the comment section is you were warned. So we've got the groove roughed in and we need to go down to 0.375 root diameter all the way down in the bottom down there. That's 3 eighths of an inch. We stopped short of that at 0 0.400. And I was texting with a guy the other day that knows a lot more about this than I do. And he asked, uh, do you have a radius generator? I said, yep. That was literally about two and a half minutes worth of work. 
rounded that right out. Check it with our gauge. Yeah, it's looking good. Next we'll do the measurement. I don't know if y'all are gonna see this dial or not. Yeah, it's gonna be too much of an angle, but um, 375, right on. Here's the true test. Watch the needle. <laughs> there isn't even any run out. That is right on. Oh, tell me I need a radius generator. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the, this is the detent ball. They are a half inch diameter ball bearings. We can check the fit of that in the groove. And that was also a half inch round file that I uh, dressed that with. That's looking really, really good. So all we do is just repeat the same steps to mark out this second groove just behind the first one. Three seventy five. Cut to length. and dress the end. And with that, we've got the fourth gear shift rail 80% of the way there. We don't have holes in it yet, but we'll do that later. So now that you all know what the process is, I'm going to get busy on making a new 2-3 rail. And this one's had some repairs and some modifications, has some issues, and it is going to require a little bit of tweaking. All right, I'm going to adjust groove placement and um, kind of have a few things that have been rolling around in my brain. So I've formulated my plan. I'm going to shut the camera off, get busy on this, bring you all back after a bit. And here's the new 2-3 rail. It turned out really well. So I've already read probably four or five times in the comments section beneath the prior episode, people wondering why I didn't try to save these original ones, heat them, straighten them, what have you. Well, when you look at them, this one's the worst case scenario, but you can see how we've got the detent ball track marks that have worn in it. And then they had spun it 180 and they wore track marks in it again. The number four shift rail is the same way. Plus this one's been brazed up and gouged and the the final straw was these quarter inch through holes that are in them so the forks and the um the dogs are attached to these with roll pins that drive through and it's a friction fit both of these holes in these rails have started to uh open up a little bit so that we don't have good tight roll pin fits anymore so all things considered I was just time ahead making two brand new rails. They're straight, they're true, much better than what these original ones are. So I wanna show you the next thing that I found though. So we'll get number four rail put in here. And just like that, floats nice and free, just like you'd want it to be. So let's look at two, three. This gets rather interesting. Starts in the back just fine, drifts forward. Now watch it as it lines into the hole at the front. Look at that, it's low, see that? There's that gap right up there at the top. I just, okay, and it's not as bad as the other one. You can lift it 
and start it in, but it's really tight. So I was like, what's going on here? So I, I did a little bit of a test. Let's try number four rail in the two, three slot. Same thing. All right. Now let's try the new two, three rail in the four slot. See that? That is just how it's supposed to be. I can't explain why, but I've come to the conclusion that this hole and this hole are not in line with one another. It's like this one is pitched down just a little bit and that's why that rail goes up and it hits and you have to actually lift it and tweak it to get it in up there. And you're telling me that I made these with this and they're still more accurate than that. No, seriously though, problems like this are not really a surprise when you're dealing with these Moline prototypes, at least in my experience. It is odd though, because typically they drill these holes with a really long drill bit in one pass so that everything is in alignment. But, well, I don't know. I didn't find any burrs or deformations otherwise with this, so it's just one of those things we need to contend with. It does though remind me of something that I found when I was working on X253, the crawler. And the rear end for that one is laid out virtually identical to this one with the bevel gear and the bull pinions. The main difference being on that crawler, instead of this just being a brake compartment like it is on the wheel tractor, they made it much larger and turned it into the steering clutch and brake compartment. And they used modified CAT D2 steering clutches. One thing I noted when I was taking it apart, the left side clutch had the appropriate number of discs in it. The right side clutch was missing one friction disc. I didn't think anything of it because it was well evident people had been into this thing several times before I came along. So when I rebuilt the steering clutches, I replaced that missing disc, put it all together, and then when I went to drive it for the first time, I could not get the right side steering clutch to release. What I ended up finding was this entire rear end casting was machined a full quarter inch off center, resulting in a shallower right side steering clutch compartment than the left side. Their fix for that back in the day was to remove one disc from that right clutch, making it thinner, giving it room to release. <sighs> yeah, so that's what I had to do after I had paint on it back apart, clutch off, deleted the disc, clutch back together, back in, and the thing steered great. But that's why we've got more steering clutch on the left side on that tractor than on the right. And I'm pretty sure that was never brought up on this day. Well, it is the next day. That took a little bit more work than I had anticipated, but to be expected by this point. Testing the fit now, that is exactly the way I want it to be. Nice, smooth glide. So I need to tell you all about a decision I made when it came to locating the grooves on this new 2-3 rail. So first we look at the old one. You can see up here, this, um, this groove up on the upper end is for the third gear position and they've done some modifications to this in the past. They've added some braze back here and they've ground a little bit more off up at the front. What that effectively did was relocate the working portion of this groove further forward. So you see how they, they, they just cut it and filled it and brought it further forward. And what that does, it relocates the third sliding gear further back when you go to engage third gear because they move that detent pocket forward that means the shaft has to drift further back before that ball falls down into the slot and holds it fast so before i made the new two three rail i mocked the new fork with the old rail up in here just to test the position of the original groove where you can see they wore it out on the first side and then when they spun at 180 I think they did that modification and it looks like a down on the farm modification. I don't think that was a factory deal, but they wore it out again going by the track mark in there even after that mod. So 
I tested it in both positions and I found with the original groove placement, let me see if I can do this without totally getting my hand in the way. With the original groove placement, when the third sliding gear meshed back into the one behind it, it was probably half to two thirds of the way in. After their groove modification, it seated it fully in place. So I decided I liked their modified groove placement because I want the best amount of engagement as possible on that sliding gear. So I just went and cut the new groove to be a match to the modified groove in the old ones. So that was the last small detail that I wanted to cover on the 2-3 rail itself. So we'll mock everything up with the new fork, decide how we want to locate it now. All right, so I've placed a hose clamp on either side of that fork so it can't slide on the rail at all. Drop the detent ball in, spring on top of that. So put some pressure down on the detent. Let's find neutral. Okay, that's neutral. Pressure on these to make sure they are in neutral as well. Yes, we'll check alignment. Good. Spin test. Good, we are in neutral. Now, let's try third gear first. So we are going to slide this gear into the one behind it. So we're watching to see how, how deep everything meshes. See if we can catch this on camera or not. Try and balance our light. Okay, not perfect, but I think it'll work. So I'm going to start it sliding back. Make sure, see. Make sure we're starting in. Yes, we are. Okay, pressure on the detent so we know where we're home. All right, that's third gear. And looking at our mesh, it's excellent. We're all the way in. Spin test. Yes, we have third gear. That was the critical one right there. So let's try second. So we'll pull it out. Once again, pressure on the detent. Okay, there's our neutral. Still lined up. Second gear now, we'll slide this one forward. It'll mesh to the one down below it. We might have to do a little bit of a spin. Yep, they're started in, all right. So we'll drift forward, pressure on the detent. Okay, there's our second spin test. We have second. Return to neutral. All right, are we still in line? Yes, we are. That's where we need to be. Quick measurement. So from front of the shift fork collar to this rear edge of that first groove, inch and an eighth. Easy to replicate. Going plenty conservative on this pilot hole. Backing out, cleaning the chips from the bit, using plenty of oil. Last thing I want to do at this point is snap a drill bit off halfway through the fork and the rail and then try to figure out how to get it all back apart and save the whole works. So we just go slow.
All right, we've got the quarter inch hole drilled through the rail and the fork for the roll pins that hold all of these pieces together. Now, that being said, I'm just using these quarter inch diameter bolts for now because when you're working on a prototype, you don't finalize anything until you have finalized everything, if that makes sense. We end up taking these back apart for <laughs> various reasons, a lot. So they're just going to be the stand-ins for now. So do the test fit of everything. Drop the fork back in, rail back in. All right, throw a bolt in there. Just enough to hold that together and detent goes back in place. There's neutral for that one. Neutral there, neutral here. Now, off camera, I also drilled the fourth gear rail. And that was pretty straightforward because I already had a roadmap to follow for doing that. So, didn't think we had to show all of that. So, we'll get the fourth gear assembly put together. Drop the first bolt in here, locates the fork. Now we have the dog. What I think I'm going to do, because those, when it's roll pins, we don't have any interference there, but these bolt heads get a little bit fat. So make a little bit of room and back to neutral there. Throw the detent and spring in for the fourth gear. Okay. We are good on all counts. We've already tested two, three. Let's just check out fourth, and yeah, fourth has to go back. Okay, that should be fourth. Good spin. Back to neutral. Good spin. And um, I am a glutton for punishment, so let's do the two, three all over again. See if we're started in. Yep. Okay. Good on three. Back to neutral. Oops. Don't let that spring come out of there. It just wants to be down on the bottom of that gear compartment. There we are. There's second. Good spin. And back to neutral. Good spin. Everything is in line. Make sure we center out with all of our detents. Yeah, I think we did it. Well, that was way too much work for just two round rods, but I'm glad we've got it done. I am confident with everything I've got going on in here, and it's going to look even better once we get the bolts out and get the roll pins properly in place. But uh, we're not going to take that step until we know how all of these tabs are going to interact with the shifter. And speaking of which, this monstrosity, this ugly devil is what's um, coming up next. And I've just resigned myself to the fact it's gonna be every bit as horrible as those were. That's all right. We've got the new fork in, we've got both new rails. Everything seems to have proven itself out. And um, I'm just going to keep the ball rolling on this end. I hope to see you all back again for the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.